So I'm Eric Letie and I will be your host for this webinar. So before we start, we'd like to play uh, play the um, play the privacy for for uh, the recording. So data privacy notice. De La Salle College of Saint Benilde, or DLSCSB, respects your right to privacy and is committed to protect the confidentiality of your personal information, thus has adapted necessary organizational, technical, and physical measures to secure it. DLSCSB is bound to comply with the Data Privacy Act of 2012, or RA 10173, its implementing rules and regulations, and relevant issuances of the National Privacy Commission. By participating in this video meeting, conference or webinar, you are consenting to our collection, and use of information, including recording, in accordance with this privacy notice. Information is also processed via video conferencing platform Zoom. Please refer to their privacy policy at the website. The information process such as name, email address, your image, video, and audio will be used for attendance, documentation, communication, and systems administration purposes by authorized individuals of department, office or unit organizing the event and other offices authorized to have access. We also use the information gathered from you for abuse prevention and privacy protection. DLSCSB shall only retain the said personal information until it serves its purpose, after which it shall be securely disposed of. Queries and complaints can be directed to the Data Protection Officer via email at dpo at benielda.edu.ph. Just put ourselves in the presence of Holy God. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us all say our Lasallian prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do my actions for the love of you. Our Lady of the Star, pray for pray us. For us. Saint John Baptist de La Salle, pray for, pray for us. us. Saint Pinel de Manson, pray for, pray for us. us. Give Jesus in our hearts forever. 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 For Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So again, good afternoon. Um, so welcome to our Pro, pro Track Talks. Um, well, basically, again, um, this is our uh, webinar for especially for the apprentice course where students will learn from our distinguished guests, mentors. Um, of course, they will share their stories, their um, experiences, their expertise, uh, and of course, to inspire us uh, with, with their um, stories in the professional practice. Um, so to start, Formally, the program may I call on our program chair, Architect Ven Kison, for uh, okay. welcoming remarks. Hello. Good morning to all. Uh, I'm hoping uh, the students are in the comfort of their house. Uh, Nagchichil lang kayo dyan, guys. And everything uh, this Saturday or doing your ACADs. No? Uh, thank you very much for listening in this webinar. Uh, welcome, Architect Bong Resho, and of course, si Architect Jimmy Hermogenes. Uh, baka nandiyan na siya. And thank you for sharing your knowledge regarding about their future learning experience. Since uh, our job is uh, more of a uh, continuous learning aspect, but of course, in a real job environment. This time we're giving you, the students, more webinars and this is to efficiently tool ourselves in the pandemic. Huwag masyadong manood ng Netflix para at least merong balance. Uh, expect all your uh, sea break to be filled with webinars starting now. Uh, on July 8, it's about creative research. On July 15, it's about uh, architectural layouting and presentation. And on July 22 and 29 is a uh, Rhino workshop po siya. So thank you to our VPROD, AR uh, Erica and AR Aldous for spearheading. And let's have a uh, 
fruitful end of the term. Thank you. Thanks, Sir Ben. Uh, and dito na rin pala Sir Rodin. Hi, Sir Rodin. Good morning, Sir Rodin. Ayan, isa pang ano ni Sir Bong. Sorry, nakamute ka. Hi, Bong. Hi. Nice to see you in blazer and shorts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to also acknowledge the presence of the other guests. This is Pompey. First, we'd like to thank our very own Sir Ad, who has always been there, uh, to help us with the technical aspect of the webinars. Of course, students, I see more and more coming. Please tell your classmates to come in already. You start. So. Now we move on to uh, the introduction of our first speaker. So Sir Bong, chill ka muna dyan. Papakilala ka lang muna si Sir Ginny. Then we'll proceed to his presentation. And then next will be, uh, I'll introduce you and then your presentation. Then later on, we'll have Q&A. Uh, you and Sir Ginny para mas interactive sa way kayo. All right? So, about architect Jimmy Hermogenes, I'm sure a lot of you know him already, but um, currently, uh, about Sir Jimmy, he is, a, of course, a planner and an architect. Um, Sir Jimmy is currently, uh, sorry, previously, kasi July ito na, ayan, uh, district director of uh, B3, UAP B3, and past president of the United Architects of the Philippines, Makati Chapter, the oldest Makati Chapter, um, a member of the Council of Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, and the Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners, or PIEP. He was a member of a member of the jury for the MMDA Building National Design Competition. During his more than 25 years in the practice of architecture, he worked with planners, designers, and consultants, PDC Inc., GF and Partners, of course, Resha and Casas, um, Cadiz International, EI Vasquez, Architects and Planners before starting Hearth Group in 2019. During these days, he was part of the teams that worked on the project and projects such as Alabang Town Center, Expansion, Lorieta 4 Retail Redevelopment, Greenbelt 3 and 4 Redevelopment, the Shang Grand Tower, Bellagio 3, Toby Sports Headquarters, the Bayleaf Intramuros, and the Lyceum of the Philippines Cavite Campus. Wow. Sovereign Week time is Sir Jimmy. Architect Hermogenes is a graduate of the University of Santo Tomas and passed the architecture licensure exam in 1994. And he was awarded the most outstanding trainee during Taisei Corporation's 1995 AOTS program and awarded the trip to Tokyo to further expand his knowledge of architecture. He took his master's in business of administration at Ateneo de Manila Graduate School of Business. And as part of his MBA journey, he took the European Studies and Culture and Communication subjects at the École Superior de Ciencias Comerciales de Angers in English, France. Uh, he is also a photographer and has been a member of the Camera Club of the Philippines since 2015. That's why he can't uh, do a live presentation because he has an event uh, for this club today. But he'll be here at 2 p.m. And his photos have been published uh, on Future Art and Art Icons magazine. Three of his photographs also have been selected by Sofitel Plaza for the exhibition with other uh, images from the CCP. 
and Jimmy won third place at the uh, 2013 NCCA Contemporary Philippine Architecture Photography Competition. And lastly, and definitely is proud of, he is a professor of architecture, desi architectural design and professional practice at the LaSalle College of St. Benil, um, School of Design and Arts. And he's also an AutoCAD accreditor, accredited trainer at the um, MicroCAD Technologies for 80 years. And he's uh, also a writer and has written articles for Blueprint, The Skyline, and UAP Makati Chapters Newsletter. So um, I give now the floor to Sir Jimmy. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. okay, good morning or good afternoon. No? Uh, since this is recorded, I'm not sure uh, what time uh, this, this will be playing. So good day, no, everyone. So thank you uh, to the SDA for inviting me and thank you to Ma'am Erica and uh, Sir Ben no, for inviting me to uh, to give a talk you know, today uh, about small firms. So, and thank you for, for joining the webinar, webinar to the students. No? Uh, I hope you learned something from this uh, talk. So without further ado, I'd like to share my screen no? and start my presentation. Uh, let's see, share screen. Okay, so this is a poster from a movie from 1998. So I think hindi pa kayo at the time, no? So it says size does matter, no? So it's a it's a movie uh, uh, about Godzilla, no? So the the huge uh, monster, no? So of course we're not talking about Godzilla today, but we're talking about the size of firms no so big or small firm size does matter so uh, what where should we go no after graduation or for OJT ano bang pipiliin nating firm should it be a small firm or should it be a big firm so we'll try to give you some insights on what happens in a small firm no um, because i uh, i'm running one now a, a firm of six people so so I'll tell you how, how things go in a small firm so you know what to expect. No? For big firms, I think, uh, of course, Architect Bong Resho will uh, be discussing on that uh, after my, my talk. So first, let's define a small, medium, and large firm. So small firms usually have 1 to 20 employees. No? And that's according to the AIA. No? But some people... Uh, if you browse through the internet, some say small firms are up to 50 people, no? maybe in the US, no? but in the Philippines, medyo malaki na yung 50. It can be considered as medium. No? So mid-sized firms range from 20 to 100 employees, again, according to the AIA. But some would say 50 to 150 is medium size. So syempre, iba nga siguro ang American standard. No? But in the Philippines, if you have 100, uh, medyo malaki na yun i-manage. No? And of course, large firms have more than 100 employees. Again, some say large firms are 150 and up. So the point is, walang masyadong strict definition kung ano ang small, medium, and large firms. But of course, generally, we know that mga 1 to 10 is small. So ang contentious lang, mga 20 to 50, mid-size ba yan, o dapat ba 100. So, but of course, we know that 200 and up is a large firm, no? Parang ganun. Yung middle lang ang medyo undefined, no? But anyway, we're, we will be talking about small firms. So that's 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, no? So there's this architect, no? Famous architect, uh, Maya Lin, no? So she said, I deliberately keep a tiny studio. I don't want to be an architectural firm. So ayaw niyang lumaki, no? even if she's famous. No? Uh, she became famous be because of the, 
she won the design contest competition for the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. No? So, and she was not even a graduate at that time yet. She was still studying architecture and she won the competition. No? So, kaya sikat siya up to now. No? So, why would she want a tiny studio? Why doesn't she want to become an architectural firm? Because she wants to remain an artist. So, yun minsan yung nagiging, ano ba, parang type typecast ng small firm, medyo artsy, artsy studios, no? Pagka smaller firms. Okay. And the other side, on the other side, is uh, the big firm. So, si uh, James Stewart Paul Sheck, he's one of the uh, bigger firms in the US, no? So, sabi niya, a question frequently asked is, how do you do all that work, no? That wonderful work. So, ang sabi niya, easy, I don't. No? So, of course, in bigger firms, the principals cannot do all the work. No? They do not do all the work. Kasi malalaking projects. Eh, no? uh, they have assistants, they have associates, they have junior architects to do some of the work for them. So, they don't do all the work. No? So, it's uh, talagang teamwork, group work talaga ang architecture, especially for, for the bigger firms. And so, the question now is, what's the best firm size to get into? Of course, for you guys, for those who are graduating or those looking for OJT, saan ba maganda? Sa maliit na firm o sa malaki? So, well, you decide. We will just provide you with uh, insights on what goes on in a small firm and later what goes on in a big firm. Okay. So, I, I, I'll do that. I'll explain how, how I... How I got here running a small firm, no, by by just a short uh, story about my my career, how I got how how I got here, no. So I started with after graduation, I started with a PDC, Planners Designer Consultants under architect Danny Bunag, no. So we had about 25, 30 pa iba iba employees. So it was a medium sized firm, no. I think. And inabutan namin yung mga drafting table, no? technical pen, pencil, uh, uh, doing work. So at that time, uh, we were doing smaller projects, no? uh, mga cottages sa Baguio Country Club, sa Subic Bay. No? Uh, and we were doing manual drafting. But at that time, I've been hearing yung CAD. No? Ito na yung CAD, dadating na yung CAD. So I studied no? at MicroCAD. But unfortunately, the firm was not ready to... To migrate to the technology so i thought i should look for uh, another job no where cad is being offered so i moved from a medium-sized firm into a bigger firm one of the biggest in fact in the country at that time no gfn partners architects so uh, they were offering cad and i have learned cad so i got accepted but partly because i had a friend there no May isang friend na naman ako dun. so uh I was assigned to do CAD work for Glorieta 4, no, yung mall. And then after that, I was assigned to Alabang Town Center expansion. And then later, as job captain, na, na promoted, I, I headed the team doing the CAD work for Greenbelt 3 and 4. No? So it was really a fun experience, a lot of learnings. I learned a lot from the firm. Uh, doing the malls, no, doing retail, uh, the three large malls of Ayala, no, at that time. So it was very rewarding, no. So I stayed there for six years. I enjoyed it, but later on, I realized I did not know how to design, no. Kasi nga pag dumating yung 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 project sa amin, merong foreign consultant naka design na siya. So we did not know, kasi kan operator kami hindi kami umaten ng presentations, no. So we did not know han, bakit nandiyan yung elevator, but nandun yung stairs, paano ba yung but nandiyan yung public spaces. We did not know all the reasons behind the design. So na realize ko later na hindi pala ako marunong mag-design, no? Marunong ako mag-CAD, mag-production work. Uh, pero design parang after 6 years parang hindi masyado, no? Especially elevations, paano bang gagawin yung elevations? Paano maganda? Paano ba yung proportion, no? I wasn't parang train no uh, with that pero magaling ko mag production no i can say that so 
having realized that I thought dapat maghanap po ka ng work na matututo ako mag-design, no? Gusto ko design. Fortunately, yung Green Belt 2 was being designed by another firm called Resho and Casas. So, we had parang kasama namin sa site yung mga taga Resho and Casas and then one day sabi nung staff nila, may opening sa amin sa design baka gusto mo. So, of course, I grabbed it, no? So, I went I applied and I got accepted uh, with Resha and Casa. So first, we were doing yung Eastwood pa, no? Eastwood, uh, <clears throat> Eastwood Mall. So part of the design. But then they, I think they realized na magaling sa production. So they reassigned me to Shang Tower. Yung, it's a 45-story condominium in Makati. So I thought hindi siya design work kasi may foreign na naman uh, architect, no? PNT from Hong Kong. But I thought, pero iba to high rise, no? Yung yung ginagawa ko dati puro malls, four story, five stories. Pero ito, this is four to five stories. So I thought, okay, then I will learn from this, no? Doing high rise. So I finished the project as as the CAD lead, no? Uh, and then I was assigned again to another high rise condominium, uh, Bellagio Two, no? In Fort Bonifacio. And then at that time we started uh, the firm, no? Resh and Casa started. Uh, training for Revit. So I was part of the team that first uh, studied Revit in the firm. So, but then again, I realized na sa production na naman ako, no, gusto ko talaga maghanap ng design. So, at the time, I transferred to another firm, no, pero hindi ako mas, masyadong matagal doon. Iba yung schedule, yung working schedule, yung work-life balance. So, parang three months lang, I resigned and I thought, mag-freelance na lang ako. No? Uh, freelance work. So, I did that for a year. No, okay naman. I was earning, pero I I knew I was not learning. Kasi magisa lang ako eh. No, uh, I had no one to talk to to discuss no issues about design architecture. I had no one to ask pag may problema dahil wala akong boss. So, uh, fortunately, being part of the UAP Makati chapter, you know, I was secretary. The president at the time was Topi Vasquez. So we were talking, sabi niya, ano ginagawa mo? So sabi to, freelance. Sabi niya, baka gusto mong kunin to, freelance, i-outsource kasi yung project ko school. No? So sabi ko at that time, uh, school, madali lang to. No? Box, box, copy, copy, typical, typical floors. Not knowing that he was designing the Lyceum uh, of the Philippines in Cavite. No? So if you're familiar with that, uh, I sorry, I got ahead of myself. No, before going to Topi Vasquez, this is one thing I learned. No, from Resha and Casa, actually from Architect Bong. So one day, uh, Bong was talking to my seatmate. No, sinasabihan niya na parang bakit matagal, but ang tagal gawen ganyan. So sabi niya, we are corporate architects. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. No, so I remember that kasi sabi ko tama naman no there are things especially for corporate architecture no high rise buildings commercial buildings may mga details na pwedeng ulitin na lang no hindi na kailang inventohin every time no example mga fire exit railing handrails di ba hindi siya parang kailangan isipin mo every project so maganda yung no, I remember that no and I use that no especially with with our staff na we have to be efficient no. We have to work efficiently, no yung hindi lahat kailangan i-design natin from scratch. Okay? So, after that, ayan, 2005 I thought mag-freelance muna kaya ako, no? So, yun nga, I I did and then uh I met Topi Vasquez through the UAP. So, we were designing the Lyceum of Cavite na very complicated pala yung plan, yung shape, ng roof. <coughs> but eventually, uh, we succeeded. Kasi nga, I was very well trained with CAD, with production. So we did it, na no? successfully naman. So, ang maganda dun sa firm ni Topi, we were doing design, we were doing production, we were going to the site, no? And we were doing different kinds of projects, hotels, schools, 
houses, condos, high rise, no? So that's why I stay there for 12 years kasi very varied yung experience. Topi was really fun to work with. Uh, we learned a lot from him. Excuse me. And so I stayed there for 12 years. No, it's a medium-sized firm. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Next. Ang isang natutunan ng Kitopi is he always said, no, never burn bridges. So I don't know who yung kasi yung original, but he always said that, no, never burn bridges. Okay, which which I realized much much uh, later on na talagang it's true, no. So that's why I'm sharing it with you guys, no. Ayan. So after uh, twelve years with Topi Vasquez, no, I I thought again mag mag set up uli kaya ako ng ano ng firm, no. Pero hindi na magisa hindi na freelance. I wanted to set up uh, a firm. Yung merong may kasama. No, so we will all uh, learn together, grow together, no, uh, career-wise. So uh, I took up my my masters uh, in business administration at the Ateneo because one of the reasons was when I was in college, sabi ng prof ko during midterm uh, grade consultation, di ba? <clears throat> sabi ng prof. Uh, Tinitignan ko yung grades mo sa yung mga major plates yung gagawin mo for a month or two months. Sabi niya, mataas yung grades mo sa major plates. Pero yung SKs, mababa yung grades mo sa SKs. So sabi niya, you're a good designer but a bad manager. Sabi niya, you cannot think well under pressure. Kaya yung SKs mo mababa. Pero given time, okay ka naman. Sabi niya. So, Work on that, no? Yung yung under work better under pressure, so to become a better manager. So in yung lagi ko inisip, I should study management, siguro para so I can uh, improve that, no? So thanks to my prof for that comment, na inspire ako mag uh, mag MBA. And so uh, during MBA, may mga courses doon na magpe-present ka ng mga proposals, no? your situation in, in your career, ganyan. So of course, I was pro uh, proposing uh, setting up my firm, my own firm. And I got a lot of encouragement uh, from my professor. Sabi na, gawin mo yan, gawin mo yan, okay yan. No? So eventually, I did. No? So I established Heart Group uh, in 2019. No, 2019, we started. And of course, the first thing you have to do in, to start a firm is to find people. No? Uh, Pinaka-importante naman uh, mga tao. So we have six people in the firm, including me. Ayan. So uh, the, the first person I approached was uh, Grace. No, I worked with her at the I. Vasquez. So bakit kasi siya na ko? Number one, super talino. No, magaling. As in, uh, fresh grad siya when we were working together, pero kaya niya mag-handle ng project. So I thought, baka gusto niya. No? So she took the boards and was number six, no? top, top notcher sa board. She's very good in management, in Excel, in whatever software, no? in DIM. Magaling siya. So fortunately, she agreed to join, no? to join us. And then the other guy I, I asked is Ian, the, the guy in the third picture, no? Ian Toisa. So Shanaman, he also teaches in TIP and he has a master's uh, degree in construction management. So I thought, okay, na tong core group na to, no? Uh, merong magaling magmanage. I mean, magaling sa, sa mga, well, hindi na magaling magmanage pa. Nag MBA, no? Hindi pa magaling, but trying. And then merong magaling sa production, sa Archicad. And then merong magaling sa construction management. So I thought, okay na siguro. So the next thing we need were junior architects. So we posted no uh, hiring. So uh, the first set, okay naman sila. The first set of applicants, but they only lasted three months. no uh, for, yung, for other reasons, ang isang sinabi nila, is uh, 
Sabi nila, we were a small firm, but we were acting like a big firm. So, paano nangyari yan? Small firm, pero like a big firm. Kasi, of course, we went or I went to work for almost 20 years in big firms. No? So, na-adapt ko yung mga practice nila, yung, yung time consciousness, no? yun nga, uh, uh, efficiency. So, we were... We were adapting those practices, even if we were small, no? Na mahigpit sa attendance, sa punctuality, may dress code, no? Kasi pag humarap ka sa client, dapat, syempre, uh, presentable ka, mga ganyan. So, sabi niya, they were looking for a small firm na parang yung culture, small firm din, parang barkada, yun ang mga term nila na hindi masyadong mahigpit sa time, pwede, papasok ka ng 10 a.m., uwi kang 10 p.m., mga ganun ang hinahanap nila or idea nila sa small firm. Well, many other small firms are like that. No, yung mas relaxed, no, mas relaxed yung atmosphere, but not our firm because our vision is to grow. Not our vision is not to remain a small firm like Maya Lin. Our vision is to grow bigger, no? Uh, at least mid-size sana in the future. That's why we are adapting the 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 practices of the bigger firms, no? So yun, yun yung reason nila ba't sila umalis dahil they were looking for a different kind of culture. No? So again, we, we search for uh, candidates no? and then yung exam, yung fourth guy, yung fourth picture, si Eton, uh, dun sa batch nila na nag-exam, siya yung pinakamababa sa CAD. No? Uh, tinitignan namin yung iba, natapos yung exam siya, hindi masyado. But during the interview, we felt his eagerness his yung positive attitude towards work no towards learning and uh para nakita namin may potential so pinag-usapan namin nila grace so what do you think yung iba ang galing magcad pero eto hindi siya magaling pero nakikiba yung dating no iba yung personality niya sa interview so sabi na rin sige let's try it let's try, let's let's uh follow our gut feeling no so yan, kinuha namin si Eton and three years later, we never regretted having picked him. No? Yung potential nga handon. And then when, when we teach him, he learns fast. He's very cooperative, very dependable. He can make good decisions on his own. No? So we never regretted it. No? So he's still with us after three years. And then the next picture, si Pam. Uh, well, she's been with us for a year na. No? So she's from UST. Uh, she came from a big firm. She came from IDEA. Uh, but apparently during the pandemic, uh, she was not allowed by her parents to, to go to the office. Pero at that time, there was a time na pinababalik na sila. So she had to resign. Kasi sabi ng parents niya, uh, hindi pa safe. No? So she applied with us. On, tinanong na muna, papasok na ba kami sa office? Sabi ko, hindi. Hanggang hanggang merong pandemic work from home tayo no so she we accepted her and then she's still with us after a year no and then she recommended our newest employee mga 6 months pa lang siya sa amin si Alain no the last guy uh, he's also cum laude in UST so magaling din so sabi namin kahit konti tayo pero dapat lahat efficient lahat magaling then we can do our projects well no kahit konti basta quality people no so yun ang isang importante sa firm kahit maliit kayo dapat lahat efficient lahat dedicated lahat passionate no so when it comes to the office syempre maliit din yung office no kasi anim lang kami we cannot afford to pay for a bigger office no so just the basics desk computers Basta powerful yung computer to do BIM. So, okay na yan. No? So, yung isang applicant nga, no, nag-apply. And then we had, the, you know, ina-update namin yung presence namin sa, sa internet. No? Yung website, yung Facebook, Instagram. We post, uh, we try to post regularly. No? So, sabi ng isang applicant, Sir, akala ko malaking firm kayo. <laughs> no? Kasi based sa sa mga nakita niya sa online. Pero sabi ko, ano, na-disappoint ka ba? <laughs> Hindi naman, sir. Okay naman. Okay naman ang small firm din. So, yun. Anyway, in you can, you can project na malaki ka, no, bigger than what you are. No? Uh, 
online. Uh, so, ayan, this is our small office. Pag tumalikod ka, pinto na yan, going out. No? So, this is just us. So, isang problem pag small office is wala kaming conference room. So, when we had this uh, visitor no, from Canada, so, he was offering a work. No? He was offering outsourcing work to us from Canada. Kaso wala kaming conference room. So, sa floor kami nagdi-discuss. No? So, we realized kailangan yata natin ng conference room. No? So on the right side naman, uh, we were recommended by uh, former colleagues at TI Vasquez. So sabi nga, never burn bridges. So naalala niya kami na ano, naghahanap yung magazine ng may interview na small firm. So sabi niya, ito, puntahan mo, tawagan mo si Jimmy. No? So the, the magazine went to our office, interviewed us, and then yeah. So again, never burn bridges. So they, they bring you uh, good connections. So si John then yung, yung guy na nagbibigay ng project from Canada sa GF siya initially pumunta no he went to GF and Partners offered the project outsourcing kaso houses so ayaw yata ng GF ng houses so hindi siya parang hindi interested dun sa project so nagtanong siya dun sa mga tao sa GF no so fortunately ando pa yung mga friends ko sabi niya i-try mo pinapunta niya sa akin so sabi ko okay sure of course we'll do that so up to now three years later we're still doing houses in Canada. No? So, hindi naman bong house. We're doing the framing. No? Parang may special software sila to do the timber framing. So, uh, it's been three years. It's parang, ano siya, at least meron kaming regular income. No? Uh, small houses, they send us the plans and then we do the framing and then send it back to them. No? So, ayun. So, again, never burn bridges kasi si John was recommended to me by my friends in GFN partners. Okay. So realizing that we needed an off uh, 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 conference room. So I have another unit in the same building na for rent sana. Uh, pero sabi ko, gawin na lang nating ano, uh, conference room na pwedeng expandable as our future office pag nag-expand tayo. No? And then in the evening, dapat convertible siya sa play room, game room, or KTV room. No? Para day and night may function siya. And then we have our own uh, place na pagigimik mas mura kasi bilhin na lang tayong drinks, snacks, pizza, okay na. Diba? Unlimited time pa. So that was our goal. So we did it. We designed it. We built it. And then for our first anniversary, we were supposed to have our, to celebrate there, no? first anniversary. Uh, unfortunately, the week itself ng anniversary nag lockdown for the pandemic no so we celebrated our first anniv online no sa zoom <laughs> no and then of course it took 2 years so second anniversary sa zoom pa rin no so but we were working minsan 3 days a week na lang dahil wala nang project no minsan 4 days a week pero sabi nga ni Jack Ma no if you survive this pandemic you've already profited. So, iyan ang aim namin. No, we just survived this and then, then we will move forward after. No? So, thank God we're still here and then things are getting better, it seems. No? So, yeah, we're still here and hopefully we have profited already. Yeah. So, in terms of professional experience naman, no, uh, since malit kami, kami lahat gagawa. So we do our own specs. Wala kaming specs writer. It's us. We go to the site ourselves. We do, of course, the Archicad. Uh, well, yung dog, nakatingin lang. No? Uh, what else? We do as built. We go to the site, measure them ourselves. And then pag merong uh, out of town, kami rin, of course. The second picture is us in Bukidnon for a project in Bukidnon. And then the other one is uh, building in Manila. So, ang maganda, you can, you can go out of the office once in a while, get out of the city once in a while for projects. No? Kasi wala ibang gagawa eh, kami kami lang. No? And then, the types of projects, mostly, of course, residential projects pag smaller offices. No? Kasi yung mga big firms, I don't think it's profitable for them to do houses. No? So, most of the time, the the clients for houses go to smaller firms no? so we're doing a house in antipolo in baguio 
no? And then ito pa isang example ng never burn bridges, no? Yung second picture is a house in Baguio from maybe six or seven years ago. So hindi siya natuloy, pero nabigay ko yung design sa client, no? Nabigay ko sa client, pero hindi na ako nabayaran. So masama loob ko kasi nakuha niya yung design, walang bayad, no? Then seven years later, which is last, which is this year, no? Tumawag siya ulit, architect, kamusta na? So syempre, I remember the house, the unpaid, no? Unpaid design. So sabi niya, nagka-problema pala dun sa lot, no? Hindi na tuloy dahil kiniklaim na ancestral land, so hindi niya napatay yung bahay. But he bought another land na magpapatayo siya uli ng malaking bahay din, no? So this time, natuloy na binayaran na ako. So again, kahit nagka mas maloob mo for the previous experience, we were cautious, no? Sabi namin, baka mangyari na naman yun. No? So we were cautious. Down payment muna. No? So when he did make the down payment, that's the only time we released the drawing. No? So kasi nga, we learned from experience. No? So we're doing this house now, the one on the right in Baguio. What else do we do? We also do viscos. No? Yung, maganda rin yung mga chain of restaurants. Again, maliliit, pero at least sunod-sunod. No? So we're now doing our third and fourth branch uh, of viscos. And then yung nasa right, ito yung BC Framer, no? the one from Canada. So they've been sending us two to three houses uh, per day no? to do the framing, not just the framing on, on special software. And then what else do we do? Uh, we had the chance to do a 10-story building. No? In our first year, we, we had... We have been recommended by by another friend from UAP. No, no, he had a Malaysian client who wanted to build a ten-story building, so we designed it for him. Unfortunately, tinamaan din ng pandemic, so hindi parin siya natuloy. And then we have on the second picture we have a seaweed factory. No, so who would imagine a seaweed factory pero ganyan itura? Kasi yung owner was uh, advocate for, for, for sustainable design. So yung the site is in Bantayan Island in Cebu. So sabi niya, ayaw kong sirain yung island with a uh, factory na yung, ano mo, yung regular look ng factory. Sabi niya, gusto niya nagbe-blend sa site. So seaweed factory that, that could look like a, parang a barn. No? Parang ganun. And then since may drying area yung seaweed plant, no? yung top, yung roof, ginawa na yung parang greenhouse para mainit, di ba? Matutuyo kagad yung, yung seaweed. No? And then the third picture is a building in Paranaque. So we're still doing this under construction. And then this last example of what we do, uh, small projects pa rin, no? So this is a mausoleum for my brother, pero buhay pa siya. No? He was, he's just preparing for, ano, for forever, no? So he had a mausoleum uh, designed and constructed. So uh, ito yung dito pumapasok yung kami as artists. No? Parang sculpture ang mausoleum kasi. Eh, no? It can be very expressive. No? Uh, and then yung budget medyo mas, mas malaki kesa sa normal project. So we enjoy doing this. No? Uh, we love the result. No? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a mausoleum pero ang tinray namin i- a project na idea is yung resurrection it's not the death that's important but the resurrection so in yung team niya no so it's supposed to be the modern interpretation of the cave where where the resurrection happened no kaya nga yung sinabi ng angel don he is not here he has risen diba and then we entered this project the uh, architizer awards so first we got an email na uh, sorry your your entry did not win. And then two days later, they said, uh, but you got a special mention award, which means it's among the top 5% uh, score of all the entries, which okay na rin. Happy na rin kami na merong ganong uh, badge. No? So yeah, those are the projects that come our way as a small firm no? and manageable pa. So ang minsan problem, like last week, merong nag-recommend na naman, again, recommendation we we parang di kami masyadong ma-market kasi in connections network they recommend to us projects and contacts meron nag-approach sa amin uh, smart hospital 28 stories 
So sabi namin, nag-usap namin, hindi natin kaya, 28 story, anim lang tayo. No? Tapos gusto nila may dedicated staff no? for the project. So we had to decline. No? Kahit maganda yung offer, sa, mahirap mag-expand para doon. No? Kasi itetrain mo pa yung bagong staff. So we had to decline kasi it's too big for us. No? The project is too big for our uh, resources. So in terms of setup, so wala kaming department obviously kasi kami lang six lang no walang accounting department, walang ano ba? Walang support staff, walang driver, messenger, no? Kami lang, walang specs writer. So it's just us whatever we need to do, kami yon, no? So iyan ang setup. <clears throat> Unlike of course the bigger firms na pwedeng may mga departments. Uh, in terms of career growth, iyan ang siguro problem. No, sabi ni IMP, an architect never retires. <laughs> no, so, if I'm 52, medyo matagal pa yung retirement ko. So, paano yung career growth ng mga junior? Aakyat ba sila? Diba? Or, since maliit kami, baka magsawa sila, magre-resign, and then I will hire new architects ulit. No, young architects ulit that, that I can afford. <clears throat> So that's a problem because you never stop training. You you don't benefit from the training you give. Because when you train, they are out. No, but there are some who are school, sa MBA. They say, "Ah, they are not going to train because they are out. 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 What happens? Diba? Kaya sabi, dapat i-train mo. Pag umalis, eh di good luck to you. Then train people again. Ang mahirap, hindi mo tin-train tapos nag-stay. Diba? So sa amin, yan, we train, we, we mentor, and then hopefully they stay because they like working with us. Pero hindi lang yun eh. Of course, yung growth. No? And then of course, financial rewards. So what we're thinking is that the, this small company will become an employee-owned company. So when the time comes na pwede na kami magbigay ng bonuses, no? For deserving employees, we will offer uh, shares. Would you like your bonus to be in cash or in shares para magstay, no? So it's an experiment. We don't know if it will work, but you know, Arup is an employee-owned company, yung engineering firm, it's an employee-owned company and people stay there, no? For the, for most of their lives, their career. So It's an experiment we're doing. Can we make it work in our firm? No, so in yung career growth. But for other smaller firms, na walang ganong vision, medyo stagnant yung career growth. No, so when you're applying for a small firm, in yung isang titig nanya. And then, eto ang surprise sa akin when I started the firm. No, administration and finance. So of course, contracts kami gagawa. Yung mga provisions kami gagawa. Of course, in the earlier projects, marami kaming error, nakalimutan, lugi. No? But of course, we learn. And then ito, yung pagbayad sa pag-ibig, PhilHealth, SSS, BIR, pagpila sa bank. Since wala kaming messenger, ako yun. No? So, madalas ako nasa bayaran. No? Pero ngayon, tinuturoan ko na sila, ikaw na magbayad nito. No? Dinedelegate na. No? But there are times na ako pa rin, especially pandemic. No? A work from home. And then HR, kami rin yan, no? So yung time mo as architect, nahahati talaga sa administrative work pag small firm. If you want to establish your own or if you're part of a small firm, ayan, kasali yan, HR, kayo-kayo rin yan. So as learning from the bigger firms, we still do staff evaluation, no? Uh, 360, they evaluate us, we evaluate them para we know uh, where the problems are. No, so that they can be corrected. No, so HR. So we do the interview, hiring, exams, evaluation of the staff. We do. We organize the outing. No, ako rin yon. Kahit yung outing, ako yung driver. No, so ganon talaga. We're small, eh. No, we make it work. No, and then. Ito pang isang wala, ancillary services, support. No? Wala kaming messenger, so if we need to bring anything, well, buti nga may grab na ngayon. No? Before siguro ang hirap. 
no? Ikaw talaga. Pero buti mayroong lalamu, grab. Pero yung blueprints, kami nagayos ng blueprints, no? Wala kaming mauutusan na bahala ka na diyan, no? Kami rin yung mag magso-sort, magso-staple, magro-roll, magfo-fold, no? And then pati yung pag-assemble ng tables, kami yon, ako yon, no? When when I was starting, ako nag-assemble ng tables. And then during the operations na, wala kami janitor, no? So minsan tinanong ng staff sir, sinong naglilinis ng office? Kasi wala silang nakikitang janitor, di ba? Sabi ko si Eddie. <laughs> sinong Eddie? So, Eddie ako, <laughs> no? Lumang joke, old joke. So ako naglilinis after they leave, dahil wala kaming janitor, ako yung maglilinis ng office, no? Hindi kasi kasama sa package nila, no? So tinanong ko yung ibang friends ko na may small offices din, paano yung cleaning ng office nyo? Sabi niya, pag nag-interview ako, sinasabi ko sa staff, maliit lang tayo kasama yung paglinis sa trabaho, ha? <laughs> Sinama niya sa job description. So I don't know if it, if it, it will work for others or ikaw, pag sinabihan ka ba, papayag ka ba, no? kasama yung cleaning. Ang sinabi ko lang sa staff ko during the interviews, maliit tayo, wala tayong janitor, yung toilet, clay go. No? Clean as you go yung toilet. <laughs> okay, dahil tayo-tayo lang nandito, make sure everything's dry, everything's clean before you go out. No? And then of course, yung kitchenette, ganun din. Don't leave any unwashed dishes, unwashed cups in the in the kitchenette. No? Kasi yun nga, wala, walang tagalinis. No? So tayo tayo rin yan. And then I think last na ba to office culture. So sa malalaking offices masaya, di ba? Kasi ang daming tao eh lalo yung mga parties, talagang production number yung mga mga Christmas party nila. But for smaller offices, kami lang, anim lang. Well, isang group lang yan kung group wala, no? So parang very simple uh, celebrations, yung Christmas exchange gift or KTV, no? mas simple, mas maliit yung mga celebrations no kasi kami kabila. <clears throat> And then, yun nga, sabi ng isang nag-resign din, gusto niya ay marami siyang kausap, no? Marami siyang choices ng barkada, pero pag small firm, kung sino yung nandiyan, iyan na 'yon, iyan na yung barkada mo or iyan na yung office mate mo. Uh, pag hindi kayo magkasundo, wala kang magagawa, makakatabi mo eh, 'di ba? Magkakatabi lang kami so iyan ang difference pag small firm. You have less options na kung sino gusto mo maging friends. No? So, in our office culture, isa pa, what we do is, I learned something from from Benil. No? We have this sea break. Di ba? Meron tayong sea break. So, sabi ko, dapat ang office may ganyan din. So, since our name is Hearth Group, na sabi, na, sabi na rin, we should have this hearth break. No? Hearth break. So, once in a while, uh, we have this small office party ktv or we go out somewhere no yung breakout we did that in glorieta no parang ganun maiba lang ma break lang yung routine ng puro work no so we have this hearth break yeah so one of my staff tinanong ko before this uh, presentation sabi ko but okay ka pa ba dito sa firm na maliit so sabi niya si gray sabi niya uh, i deliberately did not apply in big firms sabi niya I wanted to experience the different aspects of the practice in a, in a small firm. So sabi niya, gusto niya yung nangyayari ngayon sa firm namin na some, uh, always no, siya ang gumagawa ng payroll. No? Even if he's an architect, siya gumagawa ng payroll. Ako gumagawa ng mga uh, uh, banking. No? So hati kami sa admin staff. Sa HR, hati rin kami no? sa interviews. So we kaya alam alam namin yung aspects ng practice not just yung schematic uh, design development coordination sa engineers construction even the back back room no uh, back of the house no alam namin uh, ngayon no nalalaman namin yung finance yung yun nga, yung mga mandatory payments sa government taxes BIR and we're enjoying it we're enjoying learning no this side of the practice So again, what's the best firm size to get into? So actually, ang sagot is it's the one you like. Kung sa mo gusto, walang malik, no? Kung gusto mo malit na firm, you will learn something from that, from there. No, if you want a 
medium size or a big firm, you will learn a lot from them. So, ang, ang, ang question is, ano bang gusto mo? Do you like tall buildings? Do you like large malls? So, malamang pumunta ka sa bigger offices pag ganun ang project na gusto mo. If you like interiors or or houses or smaller projects, sa smaller firm ka pumunta. And walang mali. No? So, last quote, I think. Sabi ni IMP again, so you make mistakes when you're young. It is important to have the opportunity to make mistakes. So what if pinasukan mo mali tapos hindi pala gusto? Okay lang, you're young. No, you have time. So importante is to give yourself those opportunities. No? Huwag kang tatanggal. Huwag, huwag masyadong puro doubt. No? Go for it. No? Uh, you, if, if it's a mistake, then learn from it and then move on. No? So the important thing is give yourself those opportunities and learn from them. Okay? So thank you for listening and I hope you learned something about uh, how, how small practices no, operate. So we'll be entertaining questions after uh, Architect Bong's uh, presentation. Okay? So thank you and uh, see you later. All right. Um, so that was really a very enlightening um, presentation from Sir Jimmy. I'm sure a lot of you will have questions or have questions. So please type in those questions in the chat box and we will ask them later during the Q&A portion. Okay. Um, now we will proceed to our next presenter. And I will be uh, reading his um, profile. So um, our next presenter is Architect Jose Pedro C. Resho. Architect Bong Resho received his Bachelor of Science degree in architecture from the University of Santo Tomas and is a member of the United Architects of the Philippines, a fellow of the Philippine Institute of Architects, an associate member of American Institute of Architects and an ASEAN architect. Architects Inc. was established by in 2008 by architect Bong Resho, excuse me, after 20 years as a partner in his former firm Resho Casas. Um, architect Jose Pedro C. Resho uh, started his international career in the architecture when he moved to Hong Kong in 1976, where his position as an assistant architect in Eric Cumin Associates paved the way to his exposure to numer numerous project types. In 1978, he joined the Wong Tung International as design architect and stayed, for, stayed on for six years. M. Moiser Associates LTD invited Mr. Resho to join the firm as an associate in 1984 and subsequently accepted an offer of partnership in 1986. Architect Bong Resho co-founded co Resho Casas in 1988 in Hong Kong and moved back to the Philippines in 1992. Since then, he has been responsible for the design of major projects in Metro Manila, such as the Church of Jesu, Jesu in Ateneo. And the church was subsequently awarded for, uh, awarded the first Ligi ng Dangal Award for architecture by the National Commission for Culture and Arts in 2017. Other projects include the 17-story FEU Tech Building, Twin Oaks in Mandaluyong, and Bohol Bellevue Resort Hotel in Panglao Island. Architects Inc. has quickly established itself as a firm that thrives on its expertise in design and compassing residential, commercial, hospitality, and institutional work. So I now give the floor to Architect Bong 
Mr. Bong, you may start your presentation. Thank you for the for the introduction, uh, Erica. Um, how do I start my? I, I'm I'm I, I told Erica that I'm not big on uh, on PowerPoints. You know? So unlike uh, Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's uh, presentation, you'll probably be hearing and seeing a lot more of me and my voice rather than seeing visuals. You no, know? until uh, I I ask Erica to, to to go through some of the projects. You no, know? but let me take a big step back to share with you my journey to where how I arrived at where I am today, you know? uh, because I have been asked that by, by, by many students. Uh, during my, my uh, university years, I was uh, fortunate to have been asked by one of my uh, design teachers to start working in the firm that she was with, called at the time Antonio Heredia, no? Tony Heredia. And so I had the, uh, the, the opportunity to work with the firm for two years before I graduated. So I was already apprenticing even while I was still in school. Um, that is like the equivalent now of uh, your two years apprenticeship after you get your, uh, after you get your, uh, after you graduate, no? But at that time we were allowed to work while we were still studying. So I worked with a firm, uh, they were uh, an eight, an eight-person firm, no, and my my uh, my professor Sonia Galvez was one of the senior designers in that firm. So I, she kind of took me under her wing to mentor me uh, in in architecture, and that was that was how I was able then to take the, the the board exams immediately right after graduation, which I did, and that was so I graduated from USC 1975. 76, I took the board and got my license in 1976. So right there, uh, I started getting work from uh, relatives, obviously, you know? and that's how every architect will start. It's usually they'll start to get work for, uh, from relatives. And the way I started, when you, if you wanna talk about small firms, I think I can say that probably mine was the smallest firm because I was doing a house for my brother-in-law I was doing a six door uh, apartment, all from the comfort of my bedroom in the house. I had two drafting tables, so at the time, wala pang computers, no? so I had two drafting tables, each one, one, pro one project each. No? So I would shuttle back and forth, and maybe that was my experience of work at uh, work from home already, even back then in the, in the 70s. So that was happening in 1976, right after I got my license, but in the meantime, um, a former, uh, a friend of mine who was ahead, who graduated about two years ahead of me had already been working in Hong Kong. Um, he asked me, Bong, uh, this firm I'm working with is looking for Filipino architects because apparently Filipinos made a good impression in, uh, in, in Hong Kong. So I said, yeah, I'm interested. So um, I applied, uh, I got the job. So the houses, the, the, the two projects I was working with, one I actually finished, uh, but the, the other, I had to hand it over to another friend to finish for me, you know, because I could not finish it. So uh, I got the job in Hong Kong, and that was my, uh, my baptism by fire, working in a big firm. I had no idea what size the firm was when I applied, when I asked my friend uh, if, I could, if I could apply. I had no idea. No? So uh, the firm, Eric Cummins Associates, was then one of the biggest firms in Hong Kong, it turned out. Uh, they were about 300 staff, 300 employees. Can you imagine that? Big, big office. And there were uh, about six, six Filipinos working in the firm. So I would, have been, I would have been the seventh Filipino working there. And these other Filipinos working there had been working there for about two years already, three years, but they had been in Hong Kong for a total of five, six years working in other firms previous to that. So that was Eric Cummins Associates, about 300, 300 staff. And of course, you were only working on one particular project. No? And at that time, bagito pa lang ako noon. So I didn't really know the mechanics of working in a big firm. Basta, I just did my work. I, was, did, I did what I was assigned. And that was it. No? So I stayed with Eric Cummins for two years. And there's a backstory to that. No? Because be, just before I left Eric Cummins, Meloy Casas came to Hong Kong. And we had been friends already in USC before that. So I told him, Meloy, I'm leaving this firm, but they're looking for a replacement for me. Uh, you want to apply? 
And it just so happened that while he was in Hong Kong, he brought his auntie, told him to bring his sample, to bring his sample of work just in case. So he did. So he went for an interview and he got the job. No? So just as I was leaving, Eric came in, Meloy was coming in. But of course, he had to wait to get his visa before he was able to, uh, to, to move to Hong Kong. So, so that's the story of how the friendship started in Hong Kong. Okay. And then I joined another firm, Wong Tung International, Wong Tung and Partners. Um, another big firm. They were like another 300 plus company. You know? And again, my whole, my whole career there, I think I only worked on one project. And that was, uh, some of you may know it, and that's Tai Kuching in uh, Kuari Bay in Hong Kong. And Tai Kuching was such a big project. Uh, they had residential towers, they had a mall, they had an office building. So my whole career in, uh, in Wong and Tung, that was all six years, I worked only on, on Tai Kuching projects. So I worked on City Plaza, which was a mall, the first mall project that I worked on. I worked on some of the residential towers there. I worked on an office building, but that was it. I was confined to just that, no? And then uh, one of the senior designers in the, in the firm, uh, her name was Moira Moser, and she runs a big thriving uh, practice also now, uh, left the company, started their own company, and then about a year later, asked, invited me to, uh, to, to join her. So I did, but uh, so that was from two, 300 plus staff companies. And uh, you can imagine after I joined Mora, I was back again to an eight person office. No? So it was a very small, intimate office, very similar to what Jimmy uh, showed earlier. And we were doing a lot of corporate offices. That was the bread and butter of the firm because I could not practice as an architect. Uh, so we were doing a lot of corporate offices. Uh, and I guess that was Moira's uh, strategy as a gateway into eventually being able to do architectural projects in Hong Kong. No? But all the time until I left, I never got a chance to do architectural work with Moira until uh, opportunities came about that enabled me to be able to start off on my own, still doing corporate offices. So I start, we, we, so that, that window of opportunity opened. And then I asked Meloy, uh, who was working in Architects Hawaii at the time. And until then we had never worked together in the same firm. So I asked Meloy, you wanna, you wanna join? Let's, let's do this together because uh, I could not think of anybody else to partner with except Meloy at the time. no. So we did. So that's how Resho Casas uh, was born in Hong Kong in, in the year uh, 1988. And we figured August 1988 was a good year to start because, uh, as you know, the Hong Kong Nomad, they're very uh, aware of Feng Shui. So it was an 888 start of the firm. So we started Resho Casas there. And then in the, in the late 80s, the Philippines was starting to... Uh, to experience a boom in real estate. And one of our clients in Hong Kong then was, uh, was uh, uh, First Pacific Group. So as you well know, First Pacific is now the owner of PLDT and the smart communications, no? but they were only into real estate then. Um, so they bought, acquired a property here in Makati on Ayala Avenue and uh, built the first uh, premier high-rise condo here in the Philippines uh, called Pacific Plaza. Um, we were the design consultants then, and we worked with a local office of uh, Tony Sindyong uh, at that time, no? the office of Tony Sindyong. We were uh, design consultants, and we worked with the office of Tony Sindyong, the late Tony Sindyong. So that was our first foot in the door here, back here in the Philippines. And then... Uh, in 1991, we were invited to join a competition for the rehab of ABS-CBN in Quezon City. At the time, the Lopezes had just come back after martial law and they wanted to fix up their, uh, their broadcast station, ABS-CBN. So we joined the competition and we were the only non-resident Filipino firm that had joined the competition. I think there were five competitors, all the big local names here then, no? Formoso, Loxin. Manyosa, among others. No? So we joined the competition and uh, eventually uh, we were selected to, uh, to our, our design scheme was selected for the, for the project on the one condition also that one of the principals 
would have to come back to the Philippines to oversee the project. And since I was the uh, principal in charge of that project, I came home in 1992 to establish restaurant casas in the Philippines. Uh, Meloy stayed on in Hong Kong to complete our other projects there. Okay. Um, so we started uh, Restro Casas in the Philippines, uh, started again, very, very small, a little studio. We were again about six people. We rented an office space in Pasong Tamo Extension, uh, which was part of a big shrimp processing facility. Okay, so we were a little office there. And then behind us, there was this huge glass wall and we could see how they were processing the shrimps. Right, so that was quite a surreal setup there, an architecture, small architectural office then right behind us and we could see how they were preparing the shrimps. No? So that, that was how it began in that small office in, uh, in Pasong Tamo Extension. And then in uh, 1994, the second Pacific Plaza was gonna start, which is the one in BGC. So I told Meloy, Meloy, I think you have to come back home already because we're being we're we're starting the second project, and I think you, can add, you should be the one handling this uh, this project. So Meloy came home in 1996, and that was the start of Resha Casas in Hole in Manila. And as you can imagine, uh, big projects like this suddenly uh, uh, coming down on us. We had to expand very very quickly. So from a staff of six, we started growing, growing, growing until uh, um, I think we reached about 40. And then after that, uh, uh, clients like Mega World came in and then they started giving us work as well. So we had to expand, expand, expand until uh, we had our office in uh, Paseo Center where we had not quite a hundred people at that time, but almost a hundred people. Uh, we were like 90 plus people. And uh, one of your professors, Pompey Agustin, and uh, two of your professors actually, and Christine, uh, is on our working with us already then. So they were part of the staff of uh, 90 plus people in the office. And, you know, from a small firm to a big firm, sometimes you really cannot feel the growth all you know is that you're busy attending to your clients and you have to hire people, you have to look for more space, you have to move because the small space can no longer accommodate the number of people you have. So we ended up there in, uh, in uh, Paseo Center uh, with about, I think that was about 600 square meters of office space. So it was a huge, it was a huge office. So 2008 was the, uh, was the start of uh, Architects Inc. Okay, I went off on my own. We part, Melo and I parted very, very amicably. Uh, and I was actually quite happy that I was back again in a small firm, a small office. Okay. So uh, and to me, you know, before I left, uh, before, before I left uh, RNC, Rasho Casas, my big dilemma then was that, uh, you know, I could not remember every, all the employees' names. And to me, that was not good for me because I always want to be in a position wherein I remember everybody's names in the office. So you have a staff of about 90. You know, you cannot possibly remember everybody's name. Uh, of course, we had IDs. And sometimes I felt so embarrassed having to take a peek at the name of the, the staff I was talking to before I could blurt out his or her name, no? Uh, but to me, that was one of the, the, the downfalls of having such a big friend because I simply could not remember everybody's name. So we started Architects Inc. Uh, we started, I think, with about 24 staff, 23, 24, right, Pompey? Around, around that number because we had carryover projects from Resho Casas. Okay? So we started already kind of between small and medium firms. So we were about 24. We were in a much smaller office. And then again, projects started to come in. And then we had to move offices again. So we moved to another office also in San Sando Village. And I think the time that we were in, uh, in that building along De La Costa, I forget the name of the building now. Trafalgar. Trafalgar Place, Trafalgar Plaza, Trafalgar Place, Trafalgar Plaza. Thank you, Pompey. Uh, then we, we got bigger again. We were about 40, 40 plus already in that office. We were getting more work. And then finally, we settled in uh, in reliable uh, reliable uh, building along uh, Balugay, 
still in Makati, and at that time we were already about 80 plus people. You know? And to me, I felt 80 plus was again back to where I started when I left <laughs> Resho Casas, because again, with 80 people, I was starting not to remember the names of all the new people again, all the staff, right? But I, that was something that I had to deal with on a daily basis. No? So I even had the seating plan made. I had names there so I could remember who was seated where. Then I had to have pictures of the guys there so, so that I could remember their faces and all of that. No? But um, so those were the, the quirks of uh, a big firm. No? Now, um, I get back to the, uh, to the topic at hand, no? which is what is a big firm all about? Of course, as a, as a student, you know, uh, the big dream is always to work, you know, you, you, international firms, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, look them up now online and, you know, you, you hear about all these big names of SOMs, KPFs, and many, many other new names have come into the picture now. And that's always the dream of every architect is to be able to be recognized as working and being associated with a big firm. Okay, and uh, it seemed that Resho Casas, Architects Inc., my name, Beloit's name, other firms became synonymous with big firms. Okay, now um, when you're running a big firm already, you really have to start being efficient. Uh, you are starting to run a, a corporate office, so you start having organizations within the office. So you have different departments, you have your the technical side, you'll have your design team, you will have your uh, project management team, you will have your production team. Okay, so that's on the technical side. And then on the management side, you will have uh, finance, you will have HR, uh, you will have office management to run the day-to-day -day, day -day things in the office. All the things that Jimmy Hermoenes has rolled into one, him, just him, one person, right? But a big firm, you, you have to branch out into all of these different departments uh, within the office to be able to run efficiently. Um, Jimmy also uh, mentioned earlier about, you know, the, the turnover in small firms, of people wanting to work in big firms. And we also experience that in big firms, no? But if you are able to organize your big firm in such a way that you already have a system in place, you have a management system in place and you train people, you become almost like a university, no? So that people graduate, people move on and wanna work somewhere else, do something else, but you already have a system in place so that that void is very quickly filled. So uh, sometimes what we do when we have uh, uh, OJTs coming in, um, and of course, we limit the number of OJTs because we don't have enough physical seats or computers for them. So sometimes we have four at, at any one time. During their time in the office before their board exams, uh, we try to give them a well-rounded uh, experience within the office. So they're not just stuck during their OJT in the office on design. They're not just stuck on project management. They're not just stuck on, uh, on production. We rotate them. So they spend too much in design, two months in design, two months in uh, project management, two months in production. So they get the feel of what it's like to experience uh, what an architect project will entail. Uh, it also gives them an opportunity to be able to decide what part of architecture is it that they really want to specialize in. Some want to design, some are happy doing working drawings. They're very, very good at detailing. Some want to go to the site, some want to deal with contractors. So they wanna, uh, they wanna pursue uh, project management. You know? So that gives them a chance to be able to, to see where it is they want to go to after they get their license and when they apply in a firm, what sort of work do they want to, to, to be doing in that firm, okay? Um, so, for a big firm, you, you need to be ready to, uh, to face uh, a corporate structure, okay? Uh, so like I said, you have your finance, so you have your, your uh, uh, salary reviews every so often. 
you have uh, you have reviews of, you have interviews about the work that you are doing whether you're happy in it do you want to experience something else uh, you have to submit reports of the projects that you're working on uh, you have daily uh, not daily but you have regular meetings reviewing projects I, I happen to be uh, I, I happen to be very very involved in the design process in, in the office because that is really my number one passion but uh, having said that, we have regular meetings with the other uh, departments like the project management, the, uh, the production team, just to make sure that everybody's still in sync and on the same page. Okay, What I used to do sometimes, and I love doing this, was uh, when, every, when most people had gone home already and, uh, and uh, I'm usually left, well, there's only two or three people left in the office and I'm one of the last to leave. I go around the different workstations of everybody in the office, and then I see what they have on their desk. I think it was pretty sneaky of me to do that, but I, I, I go around uh, everybody's desk, and if I see a set of drawings there, I spend maybe five, 10 minutes just going through what they're doing. And in one evening, maybe I'm able to go through maybe five desks or so. So I'm going through the drawings, and then as I'm going through the drawings, I start marking up the drawings, right? I start marking, a few pages, I start marking up the drawings. So I do that to about four or five workstations. Then the following morning, the guy comes back or the girl comes back to his uh, to his desk and finds the drawings marked up, right? And uh, they don't know who did it, of course, no? And then, of course, word gets around and they find out it was Sir Bong that did all of that, no? So, so they don't know how to react, no? Are they happy that Sir Bong paid attention to them? Are they happy that... Are they not happy that it got marked up and all of that? No, but I think it was a very uh, uh, positive uh, uh, move on my part to do that because they felt that not they did not feel that I was checking in on them. I think they felt more like I was very involved with what they were doing. Um, so that was something I was able to do in spite of the size of the firm. Okay. Sometimes big firms, you cannot avoid that there can also be politicking. You know? And that is something of a big challenge in a big firm. There can be politicking. But of course, these politickings go, come and go. You know, it's there and then you resolve it. And afterwards, something else again uh, erupts in another part because of this, because of that. You're able to resolve it. And some, sometimes there's this and that again. So this happens in a big, in a big firm. No, you, you cannot you cannot help it and also in a big firm you you become everybody becomes a member of your, of your family because uh, all their all their personal family problems they bring, they bring to you no so you have to have a really a really good hr person there to handle all of these problems that come to fore when uh, when when you have staff with personal problems and of course you want to resolve this right away because if they're not there, uh, the, the project suffers also, right? So um, those are some of the quirks of, uh, of working with, uh, with the big firms. Um, when you're a big firm, I guess you don't really have to do a lot of marketing anymore because precisely because you are a big firm, people, uh, people come to you because they know that you have good clients and clients have come to you and that's why you have a, uh, a big practice, no? Uh, so as a big firm, as Jimmy again said, uh, we've stopped doing residential, pro I mean, standalone uh, homes, because again, we are not designed, we are not equipped to do that kind of, uh, to do that kind of work, except, except when it's a home of one of your big clients, you cannot say no. And, there, I have to take a very, very personal uh, approach, and I'm actually the one designing the house because it becomes a very, very personal relationship with your client. You know? So the, the types of projects we get from the clients are mostly, uh, well, the types of clients we have are mostly developers. And again, because you're a big firm, you work with big developers. And if you work with big developers, again, there's a lot of red tape. You know, they have different departments before you get the final approval. Like uh, one of our big clients, uh, just when you think you are 
presenting. This team has already approved it. Nakahinga ka na. Akala mo, wow, okay, approved na. And then after that, there's another department pala that you have to, to, to present to. Okay? So, approved na yon. So, nakahinga ka na naman. And then after that, there's another upper department that you still have to present to again. All in all, you've gone through about four or five presentations until you get to the very top and then and only then does it get finally, finally approved. So that is part of what you have to face with a big firm working with big clients. I'm sure with Jimmy, his projects, the person he's talking to is the one who makes the decisions and that's it. Okay, so tapos ang kwentohan. However, however, we do come across uh, uh, big projects also wherein there is only one decision maker and that is the guy at the top. We go straight to the top. You know, we don't have to, to go through all of these layers of approval. And those are the types of uh, uh, projects that I like, wherein there's not much red tape. Uh, you, get, uh, you get a good project and you don't have to go through all the different layers, okay? Um, one of the best things in a, in a big firm, of course, is you get repeat clients. So customer care is very, very important. No? It, it, getting repeat clients is much, much better than day in, day out, you're there knocking on doors, trying to get new projects all the time. So if you take care of your client, you will get repeat work and you will not have to go around marketing yourself all the time. You know? uh, and sometimes uh, that becomes a, uh, a hurdle, a challenge in big firms because while they want to maintain their, their overheads, their payroll, their, uh, their, their rentals, they cannot, they cannot say no anymore to these clients because they become the clients that actually support those firms. Um, when you work with a big firm, um, I think there is no such thing anymore as a specialization. So we have resident, high-rise residential projects, condos, we also do uh, uh, shopping centers, malls. We do office buildings. Um, we do uh, hosp uh, hospitality uh, projects, hotels, resorts, and uh, educational facilities, no? educational facilities, schools, for example. So uh, you cannot be too picky anymore about the work that you do. I, as I, personally like working on the educational facilities because those are projects that keep giving back, giving back. You know, you are helping in nation building in a very positive and productive way. Um, so, but with a smaller firm, I guess you can really specialize if you want to. Um, when I'm asked to, uh, to do a residence for one of our big clients, I jump at the opportunity right away because uh, because to me it feels like I'm working in a in a in a bubble by myself again, and it feels as if I'm working in a small firm again because I'm personally handling this one special project uh, and not having the whole office involved in it. No, so after you graduate, I guess as Jimmy said, Jimmy, sorry, I have to keep referring back to your. To your uh, to your presentation because you you did touch on a lot of very very important uh, uh, issues there. There is no there is no right or wrong if you wanna join a small firm or if you wanna join a big firm. But of course, as I said earlier, the big dream of everybody is to work in a big firm and to be able to make yabang to their counterparts later on. And, oh, I'm working with architect Pong. You know, I see him every day. Blah blah blah. And uh, you know. That's not all that matters, really. Um, it's really your choice. I think if I were a fresh graduate today, if I were in your shoes, I'd probably go knocking at the door of Jimmy Moenes and fill up an application form in his firm. Really, really. Um, the, 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 the lure of working in a big firm is there because of the prestige uh, because of the association of being able to work with a big firm. But uh, again, it really depends on what you're after. Of course, with a big firm, you're able to start working right away on the big projects, but you'll be working on maybe bathroom layout kamuna, 
uh, lobby layout ka lang muna, you're not there immediately to work on the big aspects and designing the exterior, the facade of the building. Uh, so you, you have to be ready to, to, to start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, whereas a small firm, as Jimmy said, you get involved, you get to do everything. So Jimmy, pag nagsawa na ako dito, mag apply na ako sa firm mo. Okay, so I guess those are the those are the stories behind uh, a big firms. So of course, I'm talking about how we used to run um, uh, Presho Casas, Architects Inc. today. And uh, some big firms will also form, unlike the way that we do it, we have design department, uh, production, and project management. Some big firms, they break that down into smaller studios. So in one studio, you have all three already. In one studio, you have another studio, you have all three already there. So that's how they're able to, uh, to, to manage uh, their projects. But at the end of the day, you're still working on one, you're still working on, in one big firm. You know? you're, and then you still have to go through finance, uh, human, human resources, HR, and all of that. You know? So your experience will still be the same as to how you are developing as an architect and your exposure to the different type of projects, different types of projects. Um, So, so I think, so at this point, uh, maybe I can take you through some of the projects that we've done. Um, and if I can ask Erica, maybe to start the slide. So this is the first part of our uh, uh, website. That's me with more hair back then. I always uh, show this picture because I, I had more hair then. No? So, so yeah, go ahead, Erica, next page, please. So I'm going to walk you through the different uh, projects that we've done. We're doing offices. I've limited it. No, not, not all the projects are here, but these are the office projects. Um, this was a project in Cebu uh, called I3. This is a third project with the same, with the same client. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's an office building. It's an office building project. And um, the way that we tried to introduce some unique uh, uh, details in this project was that we we made the project lean forward uh, from the bottom to the top. You no, know? so the top floor there's a difference of about three meters. It it leans forward, and then when the project topped out, um, there was a, a a Japanese national who lived in a condo nearby, and then he called the, a building official and reported that reported that. Uh, uh, he sensed that I think something was wrong with the construction of the building because it was not straight, okay? So only to find out that it was done on purpose. Next, please. Uh, this is again, the same client. So this is how I, uh, this is what I talk about when you have repeat clients, no? So we've had three projects with this client. Two Quad was our third project with them. This is also in Cebu, it's also an office building. Um, this is in Ayala Avenue, um, Tower 6789. It's gone through two ownerships already. When the second owner came in, they asked us to redo the lobby. So we redesigned the whole lobby all over again. No? This is a 36-story building, I think. Uh, this is also in, the next one is also in Ayala Avenue for Security Bank. Uh, we left the old building intact but we gave it a new facade. Uh, and then the facade uh, was comprised of punched out aluminum panels, which had their logo in it. So their logo became the pattern of the punch outs for the, for the building. Next, please. Then we have some retail work. Uh, this is Harbor Point in, uh, in, in uh, Subic. Uh, Owned by Ayala Avenue, it's on. It's 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 been there for about uh, I think about seven years already. It's the biggest mall right now in uh, in Subic, and it's I think the only mall there at the moment. Next, please. Oh, okay. This was one of the smaller projects, but but big impact projects we uh, we did in San Antonio in Forbes Park. San Antonio Plaza was a neighborhood plaza, but it was the neighbor. It was a, a, a neighborhood uh, plaza of the very 
rich and famous and wealthy of informed spark in Das Marinas village. No? So we were asked to come in and uh, and uh, re, re, re renovate the the, the the shopping centers, the plaza. So we had to do it while all of the existing tenants were still operating. So we introduced a total of about uh, 2,600 square meters, all in all. And all of the construction was done while all the existing tenants continued operations. So you can imagine this was a challenge for the contractor to make sure that safety was at its best because there were still people shopping, there were still tenants operating while the construction was going on. Okay. Uh, the 30th uh, in uh, Mandaluyo in Ortigas, again, this was also a project with Ayala. This uh, was one of the first malls that we did with them that had indoor and outdoor uh, areas. So this also has about four cinemas. I'm not sure, but I think Ayala sold this mall. I'm not sure who bought it, no? but I think they sold this, this development already. Behind it, there's a uh, there's a thir this photo that you see on the lower left corner. There is a 30-story uh, BPO building also behind it. Okay. And then the UP Town Center, which is uh, along Katipunan. Uh, again, a lot of indoor outdoor areas, also with uh, also with Ayala Land. This was the, uh, where the former UP uh, UP High School used to be. So uh, this was like a, a joint venture with the, with the UP uh, University of the Philippines for this development, okay? And then we have our hospitality projects. Um, this was the Shangri-La in Boracay. It was a very horizontal project. The, uh, the uh, site development alone took one year because the site is, this was Shangri-La's first project that was up on a hillside. Most of their resort projects were all in flat land. So the site development alone took about a whole year. Okay, next. Uh, South Palms, this is ongoing right now. They're in site development now. So this is an all villa project. I think about 98 villas all in all. Uh, they're currently in site development now in Panglao. Uh, Bellevue Resort is already completed. This was completed many years ago. Uh, about 200 plus rooms uh, with a beachfront of about not not very long compared to Panglao, no? the, uh, compared to South Palms. South Palms had, I think, over two kilometers of uh, beach frontage all on their own. Okay, next, please. Uh, this is a completed project in uh, Davao. Uh, this is a mix of a hotel and uh, and uh, residences. Um, I think um, this is the first five-star hotel in Davao, but there are a few coming up already, I heard. Okay. And then we have our institutional work. This is the Church of the Jesu. This is the, uh, the in, in, in that other school, you know, that other school, the one that has all blue, this is where that church is, not, right? Okay, so uh, this was my, uh, actually, um, I, I, I am an Atenean. No? I went there for a grade school and high school, uh, but it was really an honor to be able to be to be able to pray your La Salle prayer, Kanina. That was my first time to pray the La Salle prayer with you guys. No, but uh, when I came back from Hong Kong, I approached Ateneo to ask them, "Is there anything I can do for uh, for the campus?" And at that time, they were planning the church. So I said, can I can I also join? So it was a comp it, it wasn't a competition, but they were considering about uh, four di different architects. And uh, finally, uh, we got to make a long story short, we got the project, and uh, it now stands as the the iconic building in uh, in the Ateneo campus. It stands at the highest point of the of the campus. And in two thousand and I, I'm not sure, I don't remember what year that was. Uh, it won the uh, uh, Haligin and Dangal Award. It was uh, chosen by the uh, National uh, Commission for Arts and Culture. So that was the first time that they had a category in architecture, and the ch church won the, the award for that. So I am I am very proud of this of this project. Next, please. 
Um, this is in uh, Xavier School in New Valley. Uh, I'm showing here the Oratory of St. Francis, which is the uh, chapel in the in the whole campus. No? So it, it, it's the focal point and all the other uh, buildings uh, are are situated around this uh, around this chapel. And this is the whole uh, Xavier's campus as it start, as it stands at the moment. And you can see the oratory right there in the middle of the other buildings. We did also all the other buildings in the in the campus. Um, this was the uh, medical tower of uh, the uh, in uh, in Med in. Manila Doctors Hospital. So that is the, 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 the lobby. This is the latest building. It has 120 beds, I think. And it's connected with the, uh, with the existing Manila Doctors Hospital, but it has its own uh, lobby. Okay, and then we have some residential work. I'll go through this very quickly. Uh, this is Twin Oaks. At the time that this picture was taken, it was only one Twin Oak, but now uh, the second Twin Oak has gone up, so now we can legitimately call the project Twin Oaks. Residential lofts and uh, single flats. Uh, this is Serene West in Tagaytay. Uh, finished already, constructed. Very, very busy area now in Tagaytay with a mall in front of it. Next. Uh, this is in BGC for uh, for um, uh, federal land. Again, this is already completed. It sits right beside the Grand Hyatt in BGC. All residential and some commercial at the bottom. Uh, this was a special project of Pompey at the time when she was working with us. Unfortunately, the construction stopped at uh, 40 floors, I think. But Pompey, I understand it's it's going to be revived again, but they're stopping it at about 50 floors. They're no longer going to pursue the 74 or 76 floors that it was supposed to be uh, at the at the start originally. Um, I'm sorry, the image is quite small, but you can see this is our organization chart. So we have the design team, we have project management, we have uh, production, we have finance, we have HR, but such is a typical organization chart for a, uh, for a big firm. Okay, I think there was another project that I wanted to show just as a last, uh, last special project. Where the Erica? Can it be shown? Okay, this last, where the Pakita? Yes, um, sir, can I share my screen? Of course, of course, go ahead. Okay, ito, pinahabol ko lang. No? I wanted to show you guys a, uh, a project that could have been done by a small firm, no? but uh, a personal friend called us to do this, so I had to, I had to, uh, to say yes, and it was a very, very uh, important project uh, for a very, very important family here in the Philippines. No? They asked us to design a columbarium for their family. This is in Heritage Park. So as you can imagine, a columbarium is not a big project, but it's a very, very special project because to those that want the columbarium built, it's where their family is gonna be interred. It's a forever, it's a forever project, no? So uh, this consisted of eight lots in, uh, in Heritage Park, no? So eight lots, so you can imagine the shape of the columbarium was rectangular. Uh, we were able to fit a lounge inside and a total of uh, 98 volts inside and then a small prayer area for the family. So this columbarium is supposed to be able to cater to maybe at, until maybe two or three more generations after. No? So um, this is what it looks like. So it's very, very long. It has stained glass uh, on the sides, and uh, we got Robert Kraut, the Kraut uh, company, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, stained glass company in the Philippines to do the uh, the stained glass windows. Okay, and then um, towards, are there any other images apart from the last image, Erica? No more, no. So I was I was saying that uh, a small firm could have done this. 
and you could have done you could have been doing a project like this also even if you were a small firm you know small project big impact but so this is just recently completed no in fact uh, the lighting uh, on the exterior has not yet been installed because it's only arriving this month of July but all of the lighting inside has already been done are there any and then we also got a sculptor to do this the, the sculpture of the the mother and child sculpture can you go back to that entrance picture again okay this is yeah this one no maybe you can zoom in that's a mother and child sculpture by Sajid Imao also when you enter you see this uh, bronze sculpture right at the entrance and then he also did the crucifix inside can you show the other pictures okay this is Jan so this is the uh, the prayer area you can see the uh, the uh, stained glass inspired by uh, Frank Lloyd Wright patterns and that uh, crucifix that you see there uh, was also done by Sajid Imao. Okay. And then, and then go back to the picture of the vaults, the interior. There, this one. So this is a dead center, uh, dead center picture. There are several alcoves for, the, for all the vault. So you have several alcoves as you turn red, left and you turn right. And that door at the very end is the lounge, is the entrance door to the lounge. Okay, and then the last picture I wanted to show you was the picture that kept appearing that I did not want to appear yet, but anyway, <laughs> here it is. Okay. So here's that picture of me, Mr. Architect Resho, uh, watering the, the lawn, you know, and when I sent this to the owner, to ang tuwa yung owner, no? Kasi si Architect Resho nagdidilig ng garden natin, no? So I wanted to leave you with this image, guys, you know, because um, architects, uh, who, are, who own to, who run big firms uh, do not necessarily want to be held up in a pedestal. No? I mean, we're just architects like you guys and we like to design just like you guys. No? So I, I had this picture taken because I wanted to show the, 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 the owner that, you know, I may be, I, I'm your architect, I'm Bong Resho, but hey, you know, I, I know how to take care of clients and I'm even taking care of their garden. No? So they said, oh, Yun yung pinakamahal na gardener sa Heritage Park ngayon, di ba? So, anyway, you know, you got to keep your feet grounded. I think that's one of the last things that I wanted to say, you know. Even if you're working in a big firm and maybe you're very successful in that firm, you work your way up from being a, a draftsman to becoming a, 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 a junior associate to becoming a senior associate and becoming a partner eventually, you must remember always to keep your feet grounded, no? Uh, and I think that is what's going to contribute to your success as an architect, whether you work in a big firm or a small firm. So uh, let me um, close by quoting something from Albert Einstein, no? When he said, uh, try not to be a man of success, but rather a man of value, okay? So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, thank you, Erica, for inviting me to this uh, symposium, this webinar. And uh, although I don't see all of you guys, you know, I'm not seeing, I'm not used to talking into a screen, right? I really prefer talking in person with people, seeing the reaction, you know, some sleeping while I'm talking and all of that, falling asleep while I'm talking. But um, I hope this talk has given you a glimpse of what it might be like to work with a big firm. And then you can make your decision as to whether you want to work with a big firm or a small firm. There is no right or wrong. So good luck, you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Architect Bong. That was a very inspiring presentation. Guys, let's give Architect Bong a virtual applause. <laughs> Uh, may virtual applause na ano dito sa Zoom service. <laughs> oh, nadidinig ko. Nadidinig, nadidinig ko. <laughs> Organon. I, I think, Erica, as a courtesy, I, uh, let's invite everyone to open their cameras uh, so that uh, Bong can see everyone's face. Can we invite everyone to, di ba? Turn on your cameras.
By the way, Bong, yeah. you invited uh, an alumnus uh, from Benil who, who worked for you. Si Emma, Emma Collier is oh, here. Of uh, course, of course. Emma, Emma my dear Emma. Emma. Okay. Where's Emma? Hi, Emma. <laughs> see you <laughs> by the way emma collier is a, a, a graduate of ano, benilde and uh worked for he you know he was an ojt and uh ano, apprentice no emma yeah 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 in the yeah, bosco bosco rin yan wow boss <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so jimmy will also join us in a bit Patapos na doon yung event nila. So, hintayin lang natin. So, sabihin, mo, tuma na sabihin mo, tumakas na siya. <laughs> o nga. So, everyone, can you please open your camera so we can take an op photo. Ops natin. Yes, thank you, Javi. Javi. Hi, Javi. Happy pala si Javi. Oo. Yes. Kev. How about the others? Camille. Yeah, Erika, ikaw na lang mag-screenshot or si Ben. Everyone, can you please... We'll wait camera? lang for the others to turn on your camera. To turn on their cameras. Uh, pero habang naghihintay tayo, magkwentuhan muna tayo. Habang hihintay din natin si Sir, si Sir Jimmy. Uh, actually, Erika, while we're waiting, I don't... Because I'll have to run off in a while. Oh, okay. no? But I don't mind taking questions now, if you want. Yes, sir. Um, so, okay. those who want to ask questions, you may press the raise hand button or you may uh, type it here in the, our chat box. So, may mga questions pa? Mga nahihiya pa? Sige. Umpisaan ko para hindi sila mahiya. No? Now, now, Bong mentioned that he was part, I mean, he was almost uh, involved in Tai Kushin, no? I just want to share. Nung gagawin pala yung Rockwell, si June Palafox asked me to visit Thai Kushin, being a good example of a, I mean, a development. A planned plan community. Yeah, a planned yeah. community. Yeah. Yun yung example ng mixed use na hindi pa uso dito. And uh, I mean, he was asking me to check on that. Hindi ko alam ikaw pala yung gumawa. No? <laughs> Yun yung unang may skating rink eh, no? Yes, yeah. correct, correct. At saka may tulay, yung, yung bridge. Yes, yes. Thai Kuh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. City Plaza. Yung... That was called City Plaza then. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so you yeah. were ano pala involved in that? I mean, it's really yeah. ano a mix use, yeah. a daming building nun. Ang grabe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we were a few Filipinos, Filipinos working on that project. But I was really more assigned to the uh, Mount Parker House, which was a, an office building, and City Plaza, which was the, the the mall that you saw. Yeah. From start to finish yun. Saka sayang lang, Bong. Pwede sana na ma-share mo. Makita ng mga upcoming architects or these students, makita hmm. yung design ng isang architect, yung bahay niya. May bahay kang ano eh, may <laughs> mahabang swimming pool. <laughs> Is that your rest house in... In, in Tali Beach. That was in Tali Beach. Oh, sa ta Tali Beach pala yun. Sana yeah, na i mo. Yeah. It has a long lap pool, di ba? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mga picture? Ah... Uh, <laughs> You know, I could show you, I could show you here the picture, but yeah, let me show you. <laughs> Meron doon. As a, a, a pretty class, pretty yeah, no? Wow. Yeah. Hindi niya napakita. It's a house of an architect. So you, you might want to see the uh, a house of an architect, no? That's designed by Mong Resio. Yeah. Meron that's that's, that's what it looked look like from a helicopter. <laughs> wala pang drone nun yes. <laughs> wala pang drone nun yeah. Tali Beach pala sa ta that's in Tali Beach yeah there was a, the house was featured in a book by Elizabeth yeah. Yes, called Tropical Houses or Tropical mm -hmm. Homes like, yeah so that the house you'll see the, well the pictures there are better of course no so it was featured in the book yeah I think I saw that Anyway, na, total, nagpapakita ka na rin lang sa camera, no? May napansin ako, Bong. Alam mo yung unang mga, mga lumang diploma na, na nagiging brown na. Yung, <laughs> yung, yung mga parchment. Talaga? Mo. Nakita ko sa likod mo. Mukhang may long hair doon eh. Yan, no? sa likod mo, merong isang long hair na picture. Maka na dyan, Rodel. Tama na yan. Tama na yan. <laughs> no? <laughs> Nakita ko. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Punti na tayo sa question kasi meron lang pumakot. Yeah. Yan. From Tracy Thank Bihar. Thank you, Rodin. Thank you for putting me on the spot. 
<laughs> All right. So Tracy asked, how did you adjust from the Philippines to Hong Kong and back to and back? Especially on the differences in licensure and work culture. Okay. Uh, Tracy, is it Tracy? Tracy, yes. Okay. Tracy, uh, you know, hmm. my uh, that trip of mine to Hong Kong, that was my first time ever to travel. First time ever to travel. And I was traveling alone, you know, so you could imagine <laughs> the terror of me leaving the Philippines for the first time all alone in my seat in the airplane and about to go to Hong Kong, which I've heard a lot about but never been to, okay? Uh, and of course, having li living in Hong Kong, moving to Hong Kong was another cultural uh, shock for me, okay? First time ever to step foot in Hong Kong, cultural shock. But uh, to all of you guys, no, uh, now that you mentioned this, Tracy, I do encourage if the opportunity comes along for you to be able to work abroad, I strongly encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity and spend some time abroad. No, Because I've found that being able to work abroad opened, broadened my horizon as an architect to be able to work with other nationalities. Uh, independence uh, was a very big factor there, being able to, to live independently away from family. You, you earn your own, you stay in your own apartment right away. Um, so there was a big adjustment, but it was a good big adjustment. Um, in terms of licensing, we could, not, uh, we could not get a license in Hong Kong because we were not British nationals. So only British nationals and, uh, and territories were allowed uh, to be to take a uh, license to practice in Hong Kong. No? So that would be Hong Kong, Australia, uh, the UK, any colony of, 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 uh, of Britain, you were allowed, uh, you were allowed to, to practice and get a license. So I was never licensed in, uh, in Hong Kong. But if you wanted to do a project there, then you have to work with a licensed architect you know, to be able to do some work there. So that's why we were doing a lot of corporate offices originally because you were, that was not even licensed then. Interior designers uh, doing corporate offices. It was very lucrative, but uh, you were not required a license. But to do architecture, um, you had to be licensed. So, and then going back to the Philippines, again, you carry back with you everything that you've learned as you worked abroad. And that makes for a better architect coming back to a country that is not as progressive as the country that you just came from. So that's why I would fully encourage that if you are you have an opportunity either before or after you obtain your license, get a taste, get a feel of what it is working abroad because you know it, it's a very, very different and very enriching experience. Thank you. All right. Um, someone raised his hand. Javi, you have a question? Uh, yes, um, I'm currently doing OJT and I'd like to ask, um, how do portfolios evolve over time? Um, like with big companies and um, small companies, especially if you're going to, uh, if you're going, coming from a small company or going to a big company, um, how do you um, add them to your portfolio? Do you even or um what's what are the considerations um to take into mind especially like maybe also in the context of going abroad so on and so forth um i guess as you're starting your company i think uh, uh Jing gave a very good example earlier uh he started now he now first company and the opportunity to do a was it a 12-story building came along okay but I mean, he, he was very realistic about it and he felt that, you know, I think we do not have the capability to do this yet. And rightly so, he declined, no? However, he could have gone the other way and accepted the project, but in, 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 the, in the process of doing so, he would have had to hire more people to do that, okay? So, Siguro from, from six, they, they may suddenly have had to expand and get maybe four, five, six more people to be able to handle the 12 story building and and then they be stationary in that in that position no and then having now done a 12 story building 
other potential clients will come and say, oh, you've been able to do a 12-story building already. Baka pwede mong gawin tong 20-story namin. Okay, so the ball keeps rolling and that's how you start growing from a small firm to a big firm. Now, as you can, as, as like Maya Lin, no? I mean, she's a very uh, small, small architectural firm as well. It's really a, uh, a, conscience, a consciousness on your part whether or not you want to grow into a big firm or you really want to stay as a small firm. If you want to stay as a small firm, you really have to be very steadfast in refusing big projects because the temptation to accept big projects is so big that, you know, nabulag ka sa laki ng project na yan, automatically you will say yes. No? But that's a really a choice that you have to, 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 to make and be prepared to hire more people get a bigger office, et cetera, you know, it, it will grow exponentially. So I think that's, that's your call, whether or not you want to stay small or you want to grow big if the opportunity comes. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Javi. So we have now architect Jimmy with us. Hi, sir, Jimmy. Wait Hello, good afternoon, <laughs> everyone. Good afternoon, Jimmy. sir Bong. <laughs> I was complimenting your video. I think and everybody here can attest to that I was complimenting your video. Very oh, good video. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sayang, I, I, I'll watch your recording, your your talk. Sayang, I missed <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> okay, I see you're still in the car, actually. Yes, I I, I just finished the event. So <laughs> I'm okay. just running to the parking lot. <laughs> okay, so did you guys want to do the picture now that Jimmy's with us? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So, <laughs> we'll do it. Ben, go now. Again. Ma, yeah. I saw you, Dean. Oh, Rodan, Rodan. <laughs> so everyone, please open your, no? See, Aldous, uh, can you open your camera or is that another one? Wait, ayan, nagsipo ko sa iba. Alright, smile ulit. One, two, three, smile. Move. There you go. Done? That's another picture yes this is actually the third pero ito yung kasama ni si sir jimmy yeah so, thank, you. thank you question, architect bong from yes. aldus mm -hmm. um our, sir bong you seem to be very attached and involved with all the projects despite uh their number, number. is it difficult considering the corporate structure how do you do it despite your very busy BC schedule or how do you see your projects or um I, I think number one you have to be just you have to be judicious about your time and you have to be you have to trust your staff to be able to do the work that you assign to them. No, otherwise you'll end up doing everything yourself. No. So I think you just have to be trustful of the people that you work with and know that they'll be able to carry on what you've assigned to them. And that way the client will not always be looking only for you, but they will feel that they are in good hands and you are not needed anymore. No? <laughs> uh, but there are times that I do want to make an appearance as well, just to keep the connection with the client, especially the important clients and even the not important clients, because the not important clients later on will become the very important clients. Okay. So, Ano yung sabi ni Jimmy? Uh, do not burn your bridges. Diba? O, oh, yun. Yeah. Diba? Yung mga not so important later on will become very important clients to you. So, you mm -hmm. just have to be mindful of your time and, and make sure that where you want to spend your time will make the biggest impact. And then when you do that, it feels like you're all always there all the time, you know, but you're actually not. It just feels like mm -hmm. it. Look like it. No? Mm -hmm. Diba? So, I think that's my formula there for you if you want. I have a question. I'm curious. Both small and big firms. I'm sure you've 
encountered different personalities or character. May it be employee or clients. How do you deal with them? Kasi diba, meron talagang kakaiba of all those people that you've met in your whole career. How do Ikaw you... naman, Jimmy. Kanina pa ako salita. Hindi <laughs> 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 po ka ito yun. So, Jimmy mo na. Sipala tayo. No, but I'll answer also. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Well, a characters, no? So, well, yeah. Co-workers or sometimes clients or or engineers or... Ano, marami talaga. We meet a lot of people, no? So, uh, well, ako, ang, I guess, uh, ito, this is what I've learned from GFN Partners, no? So, when we started there, I was I, I was much, much younger. Sabi nila, basta sir dito. Lahat ng kausap natin, ang tawag natin sir at ma'am. <laughs> no, kahit galit ka na sir pa rin para hindi na wala yung respect, no? Tapos ang ending lagi, thank you. No, kahit anong in between, basta sa umpisa, sir, may respect and then ang ending, thank you. So that's what I learned from Jeff and Partners, no. So I practice that na para ano pa rin, civil pa rin kahit anong in between na pinag-usapan, no. Uh, talagang patience, we need a lot of patience from from architects talaga. <laughs> Yun. Maikli lang yun na. <laughs> Thanks, Sir Jimmy. Oo nga. Thank you. Love a point. Thank you. Sir Bong, how about you? <laughs> I stand up and walk out of the meeting. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, really, really. Uh, you know, you, you, you have to deal with all kinds, no? Of course, uh, you know, the corporate clients, the big clients, you know, because they're so big, you know, just na talaga sila, di ba? But you, you're always, <laughs> you always have to be respectful no matter what situation you're in. Always mm-hmm. respectful, no matter, mm-hmm. no matter what, no? Whether yeah. mabay yung kliyente mo or medyo weird yung kliyente mo, basta you just have to be respectful at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually I remember a story. It happened just a, a few weeks ago, no. So we were having a difficult client, no. So they were, we were explaining the difference between a, a VRF and the split type, no. Because nagtatanong sila, so we had to explain. And then sabi nung is nung nung son ng client, okay, okay, we're not stupid. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> <laughs> Pero kasi nagtatanong sila, so we had to explain. No? So again, in front of everybody, you have to maintain your composure, di ba? Still be respectful kasi sila yung client, no? So sabi ka lang, uh, okay, okay, so we, we can we can skip this and move on to to the other topics. <laughs> so pairing patience mo talaga test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Parang biglang tumaas kilay ko, biglang. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ang daming tao tapos sasabihan kang ganun, di ba? Pero, yeah. of course. <laughs> anyway, how about the others? You have questions? Mukhang nahihiya pa rin yung iba. Miss Pompey, ikaw, you have questions? Um, yes, singit ko lang kung how do you deal with different Ay, oh people. Nga, no? yeah. kasi, <laughs> kasi I always remember na parang, Um, I always practice this. Ito, malalaman na ni Bong. <laughs> When, parang, um, you learn to and practice to nod with a smile, even mm. if you all you want to do is punch them in the face. <laughs> Ayun lang. <laughs> yeah. Pero I just all want right. to acknowledge also that yung yellow sheet mo dyan, Bong, that's, you know, that's always present. Yan. Yan, ganyan. So, lagi yan. Yung, yung, yung roll yung popya niya dyan na yellow. Yes. Yeah. Ikaw, so. yeah. mm. so, Sir Jimmy, meron ka pa niyan. Well, can, can, I just, can I just add something? No? Kasi yun nga, yung, yung corporate, corporate culture no, uh, between difference between big firms and smaller firms. No? So, yun nga, when I started my career in GF, yun yung una talaga nilang sinabi. Lahat, or kahit ka-age mo dito sa office, Sir, ma'am. No, parang yung Jollibee, Sir, ma'am. No? So, yun yung as in habit for six years, ganun kami. No? Then when I moved to Resh and Casas, sabi nila, hindi, walang Sir, ma'am dito. <laughs> no? <laughs> Ang tawag namin ki Bong is Bong. Tumiloy, miloy. And I really found that parang ano, uh, cool. No? <laughs> parang small office culture, parang ganun, pero malaking office sila, but we, we can call each other by our nicknames. No? Mas personal. No? I admire that. And I was trying to to apply that in our small office. No, pero ewan ko hirap na hirap yung mga mga kasama Jimmy, ko na hindi ako. Jimmy, I, I, don't, 
I don't know why talaga. Hirap na hirap mga Pilipino talaga to drop the word sir. Kahit na sabi mo, if you don't, if you stop ko, if you keep calling me sir, I'm going to fire you. you know? <laughs> sir, 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 Uh, yeah. You know, I keep telling Pero, them, yeah. I have not been knighted yet by the Queen of England, so you don't have to call me the bomb. Her bomb. You know? I just play the bomb, you know? Uh, so, uh, how about now, sir? Uh, ako rin, sir. No? How about now? Still, you have still, that I, I, I try to tell them, pero ang hirap na hirap pa rin sila. I not am. everybody can pero, do it. Put it that way. Not everybody uh, can do not it. Everybody but can do can encourage do it. them. But guys, uh, Mahirap siya yeah. especially in the academy kasi hindi ka nagpapagawa. Drop the story. Yeah. So, it's only about yeah. not everybody can do it. Pero it trains people, no? Kaya nga, Jimmy, sa Benilds, mm-hmm. sa USD, pinauso ko, Lord ang tawagan namin. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Mas mataas pa. Mas mataas, Mas mataas pa. Lord pa. Lord <laughs> <laughs> pinauso ko yung buong sa USD, <laughs> saka sa Benilds. Lord ang tawagan Lord. namin. <laughs> uh, mi Lord. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, guys, my questions pa ba? Mukhang tahimik naman mga estudyante. Miss Pompey, your student. Ay, yeah. Ba? Oo, mga nahihiya. Sir Redeen. Guys, Ayan. guys, this is an anything goes Q&A oh, na. Oh, it doesn't mm. matter if it's if it's paper, right or wrong. Small yeah. firms or whatever. Uh, Just anything. Hindi ba kayo curious kung paano si Sir kung saan nagbabayad ng... <laughs> nang nabank si sir para dun sa mga SSS pag-ibig and all. Medyo <laughs> yeah, when, siya, diba? when, when, I they, uh, gave the, when I gave the talk of Christine at in Christine's class, somebody asked me, Sir, anong ginagamit niyong pen sa mga drawing pag nag-draw? <laughs> Yo, you know, somebody asked me the question. I uh, thought V7. What I had my pilot V-ball V7. with uh, this is what I used. Tanda, so I tanda, yeah. I yeah. gave it to Sir, do you still have your um your sharpener, your pencil sharpener on the? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course, my, my, my manual sharpener. Yeah, your manual sharpener. <laughs> yeah, it's stuck on my wall somewhere it's here. Still yeah. there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> my lucky pencils for my board exam. Board exam. Oh yeah, that oh. became a ritual. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. For the board exam. <laughs> They bring their pencil to me, sir. Can you sharpen this? So I sharpen the, for I, the sharpen, board. I sharpen it. Annual sharpener. Yeah. I would also like to share, no, the Bong, you showed the uh, you wa- watering the the grass, no, in the yeah. uh, columbarium. And I just want to share this with your permission, Bong, that si Bong Resho na- nakikinig pa ng cold play, no, uh, he knows wow. how to sing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean to say, ganon ka diversified in music. Uh, uh-huh. He has a, I know, he has a uh, electric guitar wow. in his office nice. for information. And then, oh, he also sings Coldplay. Huh? Nice. <laughs> no, but but really, to me, <laughs> to me, music has always been an inspiration for me, especially with my architecture. No, yes. if if I can do some, if I can do anything with music, I'll do it with music, even while I'm taking a shower, while I'm working, I'm mm-hmm. in the car, I'm walking, whatever. If I can do it with music, I will listen to music. Nice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> More questions. Come on, Question. Uh, yeah. Sir students mo, Sir Redeem. Lilima. <laughs> Sino ba na dyan? Sir Bong, do you accept apprentices? Yan. Uh, not not, not now. Not at this time. Mm-hmm. I think not at this time. Yeah. I think when things are really a little bit more relaxed, then we can open that up again. But not at this time. Face to face. Yeah. Okay. So, hopefully, pag balik na sa normal, we can uh-uh. have you know, yeah. for our sure. apprentices. Sure, sure, sure. Yay. Love to. So guys, ayan. Ay, kaya lang graduate na kayo by that time. Uh. <laughs> also, what, what, no? year, what year are these students we're talking to? Fifth year ba? Fourth, fifth. Fourth, fourth, year, okay. fourth and fifth. Yeah. Fourth and fifth. Okay. Okay. Also earlier, uh, Bong was saying that uh, he would check the doodles of the employees in each table. No, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a sign of a good mentor, eh, no? Parang gusto maging teacher. I'm sure he'll be a very good, ano. 
uh, That's part-time a great professor. Idea. No? Kung may time yeah. lang. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Kasi so may professional track naman kami. So if you are interested, oh, share. <laughs> yun. Just I hear you. Know. I hear you. <laughs> That'll be great. Yan man ang sabi uh, ka agad. Nasa professional track tayo. So madaling madaling. Uh, <laughs> you would love to learn a lot from you. Ayan. <laughs> Questions pa guys? Actually, Sir Jimmy, sobrang nakakatuwa yung presentation mo earlier. Kahit wala ka. Parang ang dami. Uh, biglang, oo nga, no? Yung mga ganon na. Uh, right. Sobrang, Jimmy, you have to work in every detail and every department. Pero, ang hirap nun. <laughs> sabi ko sa kanila, Jimmy, if I were a fresh graduate today and I would go look for a job, I'd probably go apply in your office. Yeah. Totoo. Multitask. Yeah. Parang paglabas sa, paglabas sa firm mo, sobrang independent na sila. Kaya na nilang domiscat yeah. on their own. Yung ganun. Ang galing. That, that's, that's what I experienced when I, I did my training there at Eredia. Because we were a small firm, so I was the gopher there. I was the youngest there, of course. So I was doing everything. I was involved in everything. Mm-hmm. Tinuruan nila ako mag-detail, mag-design, ganyan, printing, and all of that. So it was a great experience. Sir Manuel pa ba nun? <laughs> Manual drafting? Of course. Of course. Oh, yes. Bakit? Hanggang, ngay- hanggang ngayon, manual drafting pa rin ako ah. Oh, oh wow. Drawing pa rin ako. Excuse me. Yeah. Basta translate na lang. Eh, eh, kakad na lang. Yeah. Wow. Guys, yeah. yun mga na-miss nyo ngayon. Kasi lahat sila kad na eh. Computers. Yeah. 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 3D softwares. Yun eh. Pero... I'd like to add something as well. Um, Like, when I work at Architects Inc., I think it was really important that the head, the principal architect, always took care of the employees. Like, he was always, you know, if he'd go on a trip, he might pass a lubong. So I think it's it's really important to sort of um, value your employees because if they stay with you, then, you know, that's a plus for your company as well, like loyalty for your firm. Yeah, so that, 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 firm, that's no? all, you, you see, that's all they remember, the pasalubong. <laughs> the pasalubong, sorry. <laughs> yes. Ako ba yung nare-refer mo, Emma? Ako ba o si Bong? Um, um, si, si, Both. si Bong po. Sir Bong. <laughs> Hindi ka. Yes, <laughs> Wala well, ko pasalubong nun, sir. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, a uh, good conversation starts with food din eh. No? So important yung masalubong na yun. Mas nagiging... By the way, Bong, si Emma is now working for Mega World. Yeah, I know. I know. Yes, yes, I know. At, at tama. He Siguro knows. Siguro ikaw ginawa niyo. Yeah. No? Kinawagan ka ng HR. Nag-character <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> reference. <laughs> Personally, ayan. Okay, uh, students, ha, kita nyo, nag-OJT lang si Emma. And uh, ginamit niya si Architect Bong as, ano, as uh, character reference. And, 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 Anggap na. De, personally, siya ang nag-ano. He answered. I mean, I mean, he was applying for Mega World. He answered the call. <laughs> Kaya siguro nagduda sila bago ko tanggapin. <laughs> Kasi si Sir Bong yung kinausap. <laughs> And I think uh, Bong, now they're handling more of, I mean, employees ni, ni Melo, yung mga kaharap ni, ano, ni Emma. Ni Emma. Mm. Um, I'm holding your, one of your projects sa Maktan. Oh. Okay. For Archi- Archi- <laughs> architects, architects. <laughs> mm. Yes. Okay. Project, uh, archi- architects. Yeah. Like uh, Erica, I'll, I'll have to leave in like five yeah. minutes huh? sorry uh, I would have to be somewhere at 2.30 okay uh, wait before we and I think wala naman na pong questions wala so, na. we okay. can now uh, proceed to the awarding of certificates oh. sir I'll do we'll just award the certificate and then uh, Erica before you uh, start can you send me the Contact numbers of Jimmy. Yes, sir. Sige. I want to stay in touch with him. Okay, Thank you. Sir. Okay. So, okay. I, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm back here, sir. 
Sige, sir, send na lang ng, ano, ng PM na lang yung uh, number. Number. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. The La Salle College okay. of Safety Nailed um, would like to uh, present this certificate of appreciation to architect Jaime Hermogenes for sharing his invaluable knowledge on uh, BR webinar series, professional practice talks, big and small architectural firm practices. Uh, this July 2nd, 2022, via Zoom, um, signed by our, our program chair, architect Ven Lawrence E. Kison and um, Associate Dean Architect Harvey A. Vasquez. Thank you, guys. Let's give Architect Jimmy a virtual applause. Okay. Next Thank is we present this certificate of appreciation to Architect Sir, next. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Pedro Resho, for sharing his invaluable knowledge on our Propra Talks, Big and Small Practice, um, today via Zoom. Um, again, signed by Architect Kizon and Architect Vasquez. So, virtual applause again, guys. Thank you very much. Um, so, before we end, uh, I would like to ask Sir Vin for the closing remarks. Mag 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 closing remarks pa ako ako na ngayon. Don't <laughs> so, mag sasara. Thank you. Oh, okay na. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, so so thank you and goodbye guys. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you. So, um, Architect Ball, thank you, Sir Jimmy. Maraming maraming salamat kahit sobrang busy mo today. And I hope you guys learned a lot. I I, I appreciate this. Sobrang <laughs> nakaka-inspire na parang it's still not too late for anyone and everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever you want. So yun, guys. Thank you. Uh, DJ, it was great co-paneling with you, Erica. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Pompey, good to see yes. you. Yes, same. Uh, ben, nice seeing you again. Rodin. Belated happy Mag birthday, ah. Rodin, magbago ka na. Bong. Magbago ka na, Rodin. Belated happy birthday kay Bong. Uh, June 29. Belated happy birthday. Belated happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Another so, run. That's it yes. for today. Um, let's Thank all you again all. meet next week. Sir Bong, I hope <laughs> this is not the last. We'll invite you again, maybe next term. <laughs> Hi, belated happy birthday. Uh, belated happy birthday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you for attending. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Bob.